Welcome to the EKG Guy. I'm glad you're joining us, and welcome if you're returning. So we've been going through our EKG coding reference guide, and we are now in part five, which is this part here. And in this lecture, we're going to look at complete right bundle branch block. Okay, so a common thing that comes up. So if you don't have access and you'd like access, all you have to do is put this link into your search bar. You'll come to this where you'll put your email in, Okay, you'll click submit, you'll check your email, and at your email you'll get a link that'll give you access to this. And you can have this on the go and be able to access it um, as you're studying or in your clinical work. So we've gone through part one where we looked at general features, normal EKG, atrial abnormalities, both left and right atrial enlargement. So you can go back and listen to that. We've gone through rhythms. We looked at sinus atrial, AV junctional, ventricular rhythms. We look at conduction delays. Okay, we looked at voltage criteria, what's low QRS, access deviation, hypertrophy. So you can go back and uh, listen to that as well. Now we're in complete uh, right bundle branch block in the, which is an intraventricular conduction delay. Okay, so let's get started. So complete right bundle branch block. This is important uh, to know not only how to recognize it, but also to understand the pathophysiology. So let's just review our conduction system. So notice we have this here. This is our sinus node. Okay, so our sinus node sits here. Notice that we have these pathways. Okay, this is our right atrium, by the way. So your right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, and then you have your left ventricle here. So you have your uh, sinus node here that comes to your internodal or AV nodal. Uh, pathways that then come down from the AV node to the His bundle, and then you have your right bundle branch right here, okay, and that's going to be our focus. So notice that our right bundle branch is this one here, okay, then you have your left bundle branch on the left side that gives off both an anterior and posterior fascicle, okay, so let's uh, look at right bundle branch, okay, so that's the normal conduction system. All right, and it may be just review for you, but we want to focus on this one here. So notice this one that's coming from the right side, okay? It activates this right ventricle. And what's happening is that the conduction starts from above. Say it starts at the sinus node, okay? It then comes down, depolarizes the atria, and then comes down to the AV node, depolarizes it, and it tries to go down that right side and the left side, although on the right side, it meets a block, okay? It's still able to proceed down the left side, depolarizing the left ventricle fine, although there's a delay on the right side. So as you would expect, the left ventricle is still fine. It still gets depolarized, but the right ventricle does not see that. And as a result, left ventricle depolarizes and then, in order to depolarize the right side, you have this slow cell-to-cell -cell depolarization from left to right, from the left ventricle to the right side of the heart to uh, depolarize it. And, okay, so let's just use our box diagrams. Here's our right ventricle and left ventricle. Okay, we have our conduction system, sinus node, internodal pathways, AV node, a Bachman bundle. We have this right bundle branch, left bundle branch, a left anterior and posterior fascicle. So conduction is blocked on the right side. So it's able to come down the left side. Okay, so you still have that initial uh, depolarization from left to right of the septum. Then the left ventricle depolarizes by the left uh, bundle branch and the fascicles. But there's that block on the right side. So after you have depolarization here of the septum and here of the left ventricle. Then you have some slow cell-to-cell -cell depolarization coming back to depolarize the right side of the heart. Okay, so that's vector three. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's take a look at that. Remember, the right ventricle is the most anterior portion of the heart. So if you imagine lead V1 being here, okay, and V2 going across, and then the left lateral leads V5 and V6 over here, notice that the initial vector is coming towards V1. So you may see an up stroke, okay, but it's a small vector because it's depolarizing that septal. 
And then you have this vector that's going away from those leads, this one here too. So you're going to have a negative deflection, okay? But then you're going to have this strong, big, slow cell-to-cell -cell depolarization wave that's coming from uh, the left side of the heart to the right, okay? Depolarizing the right ventricle, and that's where you get this, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. And this is what we call that RS our prime complex and that's where it comes about you may have heard it, of it as the bunny ears okay so if you look at it people consider it the bunny ears uh, if you look here in v1 notice you have that small r wave the s wave and the r prime okay now don't always look for the initial r wave because it may be absent especially if the person had an infarct in that anteroseptal region so notice in v2 you can see that you have the rsr prime complex and the other thing you have to note is that it's wide so remember this complex is wide and why is it wide well remember there's a block and a block down in the ventricles that's what we call a intraventricular conduction delay Okay, there's a delay within con of conduction within the ventricles, and that's because the right bundle, the right side is blocked, and as a result, you have this slow cell-to-cell -cell depolarization from left to right, which prolongs that QRS complex. Okay, so look here, we have prolonged QRS complex of at least 120 milliseconds in our adults. There's also the children's uh, durations there but we won't go through those. Then there's the morphology, which we discuss. You can have this RSR prime, which we saw there, okay? Uh, and the second R wave, this is something important, uh, is usually wider than the initial R wave, okay? It should make sense because that second R prime represents that slow cell-to-cell -cell depolarization, and that's why this is wider than that initial R wave's duration. Okay, now there's another thing you should note. So we talked about the right side of the heart. Well, the left side of the heart is also seeing at least those leads, V5 and V6. What we tend to see in those leads is an uh, S wave duration that's greater than the R wave duration or an S wave duration of more than 40 milliseconds in leads, v, leads 1 and V6. Okay, and so what does that mean? Remember that lead 1 also sits over here with lead 6. So as that initial vector goes away, you may see a, a little deflection downwards, but then you have that normal conduction of vector two that's going up, okay, depolarizing that left ventricle, and then you have that slow cell-to-cell -cell depolarization going, that third vector going away, okay? And it may look something like that, as you see down here, these waves that you see in the left lateral lead and also in lead one are from that slow depolarization wave moving away vector three so hopefully that makes sense we sometimes call those slurred s waves okay they're wide they're slow because they represent that third vector that we said is depolarizing the right side of the heart okay so you also have to note that you have normal r wave peak time in v5 and v6 but in uh, lead v1 it actually is greater uh, than 50 milliseconds okay and that's the same thing what we discussed you have that r wave peak time where it's wider but it's narrow here okay because it's m this third vector that's causing the widening so again the main features you want to know are you want to look at the right precordial leads okay and in those leads you want to look for that rsr prime complex Okay, you can also have a QR prime complex where you have absent of that initial R wave because of maybe an infarct or it's just not showing up because there's not uh, enough uh, depolarization or uh, you know that's showing up on the EKG. So you may see a QR prime complex where you have a deflection like this. Okay. The other thing in the V5 and V6 in lead one, those lateral leads, you want to look for those S waves that would be wide. So we talked about them looking like that, that terminal portion of the complex representing that. The main thing you're looking for, again, is that vector three, that third vector that is really causing those changes. And the other thing you have to note, what differentiates complete from incomplete right bundle branch block is the QRS duration, okay? Remember that width. If the QRS duration 
is greater than or equal to 120 milliseconds, which is small, three of those small boxes, you call this complete. Okay, now if it happens to be less than 120 milliseconds, we call this incomplete. Okay, so the difference between complete and incomplete right, right bundle branch block is simply the duration of the QRS. Okay, if it's 120 milliseconds or more, it's complete. If it's less than that, it's incomplete. The morphology changes are still the same. Okay, so again, remember what's going on here. That you really have to, if you just draw this out every time uh, as you're learning it, you'll start to understand. Conduction is coming down from the sinus node, just doing fine. Okay, comes to the AV node, it crosses over, goes to the left side, and is going to the right side, although it meets that block. So you have that initial left to right depolarization, vector one of the septum. You have the left ventricle being depolarized, vector two. And then you have that final third vector of slow cell to cell depolarization, depolarizing the right ventricle and is the main reason for the EKG changes that we see, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay? So this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos, and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? so completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book, okay? And then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there, okay? We'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay? You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay? And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, 
video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.